what's going on guys today we're going to talk about the broken village and the american dream lately i have noticed there have been a ton of videos aimed at opting out of the american dream and there's some certain attributes that i have noticed from all of these content creators it's the same thing over and over and over again which we're going to get into our analysis of the broken village and the american dream first of all shout out to all of my nerd tribe that leave the well-constructed comments i thank you i appreciate you i love what you guys do and also this is mac daddy media this is the glendon cameron youtube network we have the institute of economic thought for the broader economy content. Then we have the House of Pain for business content. We have the corporate game for corporation content. We have disruptive mail for mail content. And coming very soon is the return of savage finance for personal finance content. All of those links can be found if you go to the main channel page and you go below and you can see these channels so you can pick what you like and what you don't like all right so let's get into the analysis right now we're in we're in the precipice of some deep doo-doo and from an economic standpoint the tea leaves don't read well they don't read well i feel that we're going to have a recession in 2023 and I feel it's gonna be a persistent recession because of all the factors are lining up. And I feel there will be a housing crash in 2023, 2024, and 2025. And one of the things that I'm consistently seeing is results or ramifications of the broken village. Now, what do I mean when I say broken village the erosion of the nuclear family what is the nuclear family it is a dad it is a mother and it is children living in the same household and this was the foundational bedrock of society for the last two to three thousand years um, this is one of the things that people don't seem to actually understand. People don't seem to appreciate that our society was founded upon families. A lot of people don't seem to appreciate that. And this is one of the attributes that I've seen from all of these YouTube creators who are creating content saying how they are opting out of the American dream and all of these people are single every last one of them is single and there are some who have children but they were never married and we're going to get into that uh, there was this guy Mr. Let Go he put out a video you should require marriage before you let him skeet up in you. And one of the things that I have seen is the erosion of, it used to be like, I'm, I'm about to go back in time. I graduated high school in 1985. And my last year of high school, we had our first pregnant chick in high school. Let me tell you what used to happen in Adamsville, Alabama, zip code 35005. When I was growing up, the majority of my friends were not having sex, the majority. I remember uh, we were in the gym at Bodenfield Junior High School, and one of my female friends had a dilemma. She was very young, she was very hot, she was very fine, and she was dating this older guy. 
And this older guy was putting the pressure on her to have sex and she didn't want to have sex. And we were like, at the time, all four of us who were involved in the conversation were virgins. And we were respectively 15, 16, 17, something like that. And we were all virgins. And we were like, if you don't feel like having sex with this guy, then don't have sex with this guy. This was our recommended across the board advice to her because we were all virgins. We were all people who had not experienced sex. We were not having sexual relations. I would submit that a vast majority of the people that I went to high school did not have sex before graduation. Now, why is that? I'm about to give you some factors of why this didn't happen. And this goes back to the broken village. When I was growing up, there was no such thing as coming home to an empty house. Let me give you the breakdown of my family situation growing up. My mother had me and we lived with my grandmother and my grandmother was retired. So there was always someone at home. There wasn't the access. And also, another thing, when you went to visit someone as a man, and if you went to visit a girl, you got no further than the front porch or the living room. There was no going in her room and closing the door. That was, you wouldn't even think to ask that because you knew that was out of bounds. You knew, no, 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 no. So you would go visit the girl, and the closest, the only way you can get in the girl's room is to call her on the phone. And this was a big thing. A lot of people having that second phone. This was a really big thing. It was kind of like, you know, when your kids, you know, about 20 years ago when they got their first cell phone. And there was no ready, easy access to a place to have sex unless you had a car. Now, there were people who were having sex. And the people who had sex were, had cars. They had the access. They had the place to have sex. They had their car. And once again, looking at the broken village. When I was growing up, there were no homeless people. There were no homeless people in my neighborhood. Not one. Not one homeless person in my neighborhood. There were no homeless people in Birmingham, Alabama. Not once, there was no one sleeping on the streets. There was no one camping under the underpass. Not, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. So what has happened since 1985 up to today? I'm gonna tell you. The breakdown of family. And as families have broken down, society has broken down. Once again, there were no homeless people in my neighborhood when I was growing up. Not one. There wasn't no homeless people. There was something else too. When I was growing up, this is an interesting fact about me. I wanted to live in an apartment. You want to know why I wanted to live in an apartment growing up? Because everyone that I knew lived in a house. Everyone, there was an apartment complex they had built up on Main Street, probably when I was about 14. But until an apartment complex came to be, everyone lived in a house. So let's go ahead and examine. So everyone lived in a house. Everyone had a grandparent, an auntie, an uncle, a grandfather, someone living with them who was retired that did not provide a place for you to have sex. Now, I will tell you a dirty story real quick. There were people in my neighborhood, Olivia and Levi Pace, 
who were from Chicago and they were on the lower economic strata. And I remember there was some boys and there was some woods. There was three of us and there was Olivia. And they ran a train on Olivia. And I'm gonna talk about Olivia. Olivia's father was a pimp. And they were from Chicago. You see where I'm going with this? So Olivia came from a broken village before broken villages became the norm. And Olivia went on to have three kids by three different men. The pathology. See, for Olivia and Levi, the, the village got broken many, many years ago. The village was broken. The village was torn asunder. And they grew up in a dysfunctional situation, which is why Olivia was in the woods having a train ran on her. She was looking for love in all the wrong places. And I, I look back and, you know, if you do as much research as I do and you look at demographics and you, you, you start, the tea leaves start to come together and weave this story. So I was able to look back and, you know, her father was a pimp. All of her brothers were in and out of jail. The village, their, their family village was broken a long, long time ago. And then you start to see the ramifications of promiscu promiscuality, drug use, criminal incarceration. And this was during the time when I grew up in the neighborhood where most of the kids, I would say about 70%, 80% of the kids, mom and dad were married. And this provided a very cohesive, you know, I remember walking around the neighborhood in the summer. And this is a neighborhood that was poor to lower middle class. And I remember all of the lawns were neatly cut. And if you remember when old people used to take tires and paint tires and stick them in the ground and put them in their front yard, we were poor, but there was no trash because there was pride of ownership. There was no trash in the neighborhood. And there was no trash. There was no homelessness. Most of us weren't having sex. You see, at that time, the village was strong. And even though we were poor, we had pride. We had class. We had community. I can get on my bike and go five miles away from my neighborhood and people would see me and know who I was. They would know who my mother was. They would know who my grandmother was. They would know who my grandfather was. It's like, that's that Cameron boy. They knew me and I didn't know these people, but because there was a strong village, they knew me because I was a cub in the pride and all of the older lions all of the elders took ownership and possession of keeping the community the village whole i could go somewhere and someone would like tell me my name and i was like who is this person they knew who i was one of the things i used to do as a young boy would get on my bike and just roll out. And there was Adamsville, there was Graysville, there was um, Docena, that's the name, Docena. And Docena was too far to go by bike. Docena was like six, seven, eight, ten 10 miles. But Adamsville to Graysville, Graysville was right next to Adamsville. And uh, one of the things I, I would get on my bike and do there was a drugstore, and the drugstore had dirty magazines. 
and I would take my bike and I'd ride up to a drugstore because I could look at the dirty magazines. Because there was a guy in, the, in there, he, he didn't care if you looked at the magazines. As long as, like if you didn't take the magazines that were in the plastic, out of the plastic, he didn't have a problem with you just spending hours in there looking at the dirty magazines. And yeah, there was dirty magazines. And that was something else too, because there was a, a railroad that ran through Adamsville, up through Graysville, through Dulcina, it was all linked. And I would walk on those tracks to get to school in the morning. And frequently I found dirty magazines on the railroad because the, the guys who worked on the railroad had a passion for reading these dirty magazines. And what I'm saying is when we got away from family, this is right now, I want you to ask yourself, how many people that you currently know have a grandma, an aunt or uncle living with them? It's kind of rare now. It's not the norm. When I was growing up, that was the norm. That was the norm. Uh, I do remember there was someone, his name was Kenny. And Kenny had a mental illness. You know, as they used to say back then, Kenny was off. And Kenny's family kept him at home, kept him dressed, because Kenny would always wear these uh, Carlton sweaters, you know, Carlton from the Fresh Prince. He would always wear these sweaters. He'd be out. And Kenny was very, very nice. He was a very nice guy. But he was off. He was, I would say... If I had to go back and take what I know and diagnose Kenny, Kenny was mildly retarded. If that's even terminology they use today. And uh, Kenny was able to dress himself, go to the bathroom and stuff. And he was with us in high school until about the seventh grade and he couldn't cut it anymore. So he had to go to another school. But Kenny's family, Kenny's father, mother, and sisters took care of Kenny. And then something happened to his mom and dad. They died. I think there was a car accident. And then Kenny went to live with his grandma. I want you to think about this. Kenny loses his mom and dad. He lives with his grandma. And then when his grandma died, Kenny went to live with one of his sisters. Today, that ain't happening. Kenny would be homeless. Kenny would be living under an underpass. But essentially, because Kenny came from, let's call it a whole village, Kenny never had to worry about being homeless. Kenny never had to worry about being unattended. Kenny never had to worry about not being cared for. See, once again, let's get back to all of these black YouTube creators I'm quite sure there are some white YouTube creators making similar content. It's just, I haven't seen them. They're all single. They're all broken. This is another thing. And this is something, this is one of the reasons that even though I have a wildly, ex well, I had, because I've come way down from the peak of my erotic personal life. I've come way down, but I knew, and this is one of the reasons that I always kept a girlfriend. There was always a number one. Sometimes she lived with me, sometimes she didn't, but there was always a girlfriend. And I'm going to tell you why there was a girlfriend. And uh, a YouTuber actually talked about this in their videos. And this YouTuber is alone. This YouTuber doesn't have a boyfriend. This YouTuber is alone. And because this YouTuber has been alone for so long, I feel because this YouTuber is part of the broken village, this YouTuber will probably never get married nor have children. Because going back to my example of why I kept a girlfriend, I was having this conversation the other night when you do not engage in friendships 
in engaging relationships, you lose the ability to have a relationship. This is why I quote the modern woman, unquote, because that's a term that I see all over YouTube, the modern woman. Many modern women are not fit for marriage. They're not fit to be mothers. They're not fit to be domestic caregivers or homekeepers. And you will know why, because they don't know how. There are some that are interested in learning, which is why the explosion of the femininity channels, how to be a woman, these channels are huge. These channels are huge, but I instinctively knew because I came from the whole village that if I did not cling, cause like, um, having a girlfriend is work, you know, I'm going to, I'm about to make a slight detour and talk about how my life used to be. And I'm going to talk about why I changed. When I was running the Craigslist protocols, I had an unlimited supply of trim. Virtually three to four girls a week, three to four different girls every week, every night. I didn't have to take them out. I didn't have to wind them. I didn't have to dine them. I didn't have to do none of that stuff. And it literally changed my dating life. But also I realized that if I, if that was the only thing on the plate, I would have been irrevocably altered. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. So one of the things I consistently did was keep a girlfriend. And thank God I did. Thank God I did. Because if I had stuck to the first program of the Craigslist protocols, just hit it, quit it, hit it, quit it, I would be unable to have a relationship today. I would be unable to have a relationship today. Uh, there was a girl that I was dating and she's comes from a two parent family, uh, respects men, but she has money. She makes $150,000 a year and she has several uh, rental properties here in, in Mexico. So money is not an issue for her. It's not an issue at all. And as I, we used to date, and as I watch her, she has become inhospitable to having a relationship. Because let me give you a routine. She's got these two dogs, and in the morning she wakes up, she tends to the dogs, then she goes and works out, and then she um, comes back, works, then takes a nap, then goes to work out, you know, cause she, she lifts weights. And then her life is so already constructed. There's no room for anyone else to come in. Let me say that again. Her life is so tightly constructed. There's no room for anyone to come in. And you know, uh, like I said, we used to then one night she kind of broke down and started crying and all this other stuff talking about how horrible her life is. And what she failed to realize was her life was horrible because of the choices that she made. You have men who feel that women are crazy. You have women who feel that men are crazy and they're both in their little camps. But here's the thing. One of the things, and I kind of put it in there like when my girl's on her period, I have a heating pad at my place so she can still come over. Hear me and hear me well. To be a good boyfriend or a husband, you must put your wife first. And many people do not have the ability to put another human being before themselves. They can't do it. This is the, the chick with the money. She cannot do it. 
she has a very selfish and narrow outlook on life that is self-centered, self-indulgent, self-serving. And she craves to have a relationship. She craves to be married, but she is not fit for marriage because she doesn't know how to have a relationship. She doesn't know how to put people first. She doesn't understand the dynamic and the role that she needs to execute to have that relationship. Like, you know, I have a girlfriend and, you know, there's times that my girlfriend will come over and we hang out and then she'll go home and there's times she'll come over and she'll spend the night. Part of my evolution in the changes I, because, you know, I didn't have to make a lot of changes because I'm a good boyfriend. I'm a good boyfriend. But one of the changes I had to make was I had to start letting the other women go because I'm going to say something and I'm going to talk about this. I was dealing with a chick who had participated in gangbangs. And if you don't know what the gangbang is, it's one woman and multiple men. Five, seven, 10, 12, 20, 30, just one right after another. And there's a lot of women who crave that because they are the, that is the ultimate center of attention for a woman. You have five dudes with hard dicks lined up to get you. It's intoxicating to be wanted by five men right after like boom, 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 boom. And because they're getting all that clitoral and va vaginal and stimulation, they often come and come hard. So I was dealing with this girl who participated in gangbangs. And I knew that when she told me that, that we were only gonna go so far. We're only gonna go so far. And what I have come to understand um, is that any woman that is worth you putting a ring on it is going to be your personal freak. She's not going to be a ready-made freak. You're going to be the one that helped her get to her freak flag. And that's the girl that I have. She is, she, she's getting there, but she wasn't already freaky. And I feel that, you know, in many regards, that is in me is like that is in the average man. No man wants a ready-made whore or a ready-made slut because once a woman has those proclivities, it's always with her. And, you know, she can go out and do that again. And I knew that because once you do those kind of things, luxuries, once tasted, become necessities. So, I, you know, she got mad at me. She got mad at me because I was seeing other women and I was just like, there ain't no way that you were going to be my main Kool-Aid. No, 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 no. Cause I know who you are. I know what you're capable of doing. I am not setting myself up for the okie doke because you get that little, that little freak switch in you right now is turned to low, but in a heartbeat, you could turn it back to high. I have a friend and um, when you're in the BDSM community and the erotic communities, you make friends. And I have a friend and he and his wife used to swing and they used to wife swap and they used to do all this stuff. And then it was all good until one night they were at a mixed match party. And what's a mixed match party? There were like way more men than there were girls. Typically they would go to a couple's event and it was like equal number of men, equal number of women. And his wife ended up on this table and like six dudes right after another one, bam, 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 bam. And he's, the look on her face was of wanton abandonment. She, she enjoyed herself too much. See, as long as they were, he was getting some, she was getting some, but when he saw her get way more than he got 
he saw the look on his face and he, he was telling me, he's like, you know, we're not supposed to be judgmental, but I was just like, he said, I couldn't deal with that. And I was like, look, you know, kink, kinkster the kinkster. Um, the average man can deal with a little threesome here and there, but to see your wife get hit right after another and to see her deeply enjoy it, not just kind of enjoy it, but like just revel in it. It makes you feel inadequate. It makes you feel that you cannot please your wife. And he's like, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. So after that, they stopped swinging. They stopped swinging. And he, he went to her and he's like, I don't want to swing no more. And it was a problem because she wanted to participate in more gangbangs. If you know where to look for it, this is an unlimited supply of penis for gangbangs. Unlimited. And um, they almost got divorced because she kept having gangbangs and she would come home all gangbanged out and he wouldn't talk to her. He would like, um, it's like, you're sleeping downstairs. And see, you know, as a single man, and I'm gonna say this because I don't wanna sound um, duplicitous. I don't wanna sound conflicted. I think as a single man, you need to fuck as many chicks as you can to figure out what you like and what you don't like. And also, one of the reasons you need to fuck as many chicks as you can is to get it out your system. It is better for you to be a young man doing that and then get married and then be faithful to your wife than for you to be what I call an esoteric virgin. You've literally got with your wife because she was the only one that was giving you some and then you started to grow into your manhood and then all of a sudden now you want to sample. That's not good. That's not good at all. But, you know, the village is broken on so many levels and I consistently see why. It's the breakdown of family. And what you're going to see, like, Talk about my old neighborhood. My old neighborhood, I was the only single person in the neighborhood. And they were watching me. They were watching me. But what I saw was a bunch of families and family units. And that is the stuff of a lifetime movie. And during this global reset, you're going to see more brokenness because this is part of the global reset. Remember how I said when I was growing up, there were no homeless people in my neighborhood. Virtually every community in every small town now has homeless people because they don't have family. The breakdown of the family. I don't want those people up in my business. And it's real interesting. It is really, 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 really interesting because I know of a friend of mine who got sick. He had a stroke. And when he got, he couldn't live on his own. He moved in with his cousin. And then when his condition got too much for her, he moved in with his parents. He had somewhere to go, which is why he is not homeless today. He's not homeless because he has family. And you, you will see this over and over and over and over and over again, that everyone that is pushing, I am out of the American dream, is single, have no family, and these are broken people. They're weak. Now, I made assertions that Timothy Ward was wired differently. And based upon his content, Timothy is a different kind of dude. But let's go back the last 2,000 years. What was a man's biggest joy in life? To have a son. To meet a woman and this woman bore him a son. That was a big deal. It was a big, big deal, big, big deal. 
and it was part of the cultural DNA for thousands and thousands of years. You as a man, you would become a farmer and you would farm the land and you would build a house and you would beat this woman and you would have her, it was a woman who would have your children and you, you would, th this was a thing in the 20s, like farm families. It was, uh, it was normal to have six, seven, eight, ten children to help run the farm. They created their own employees. We have gotten so far from that, that once again, the population in the United States in 1960 was like 170 million. And then we literally doubled from 1960 up to today. But right now we're just treading water because of the, the evolution of the family. Like half of the women in the United States don't have children. That's the highest number of women who didn't have children ever, ever, and it's growing. White people are not reproducing at a rate for replacement. This is why the white race is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Hispanics are leading the pack. Uh, black folks are still popping out kids and Asians are starting to they're, they're they're still very small Asians as a group of the population are still very small but they're working on it and when I say weak I'm going to talk about weak from a systematic level because let's talk about the American dream the American dream is to get an education, to buy a house, and to live a middle-class lifestyle. That's the American dream. It's quite simple. If you start a small business and you get to that 250, American dream is achieved. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. If you are willing to do the work, that's where we run into a problem. And this is something I see all over the place that people don't want to work. They don't want to work. And that's what I mean by weak, because one of the things and this, 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 this lack of work ethic, not going out and getting a job or working a job, you know, your granddaddy worked 12 hours a day on the farm and only took Sundays off. This lack of a work ethic bleeds into their personal life. Having a girlfriend or boyfriend is work. Like um, the other day, my girl called me and she wanted to talk about something and I had to set aside with all the stuff I was doing and I listened to her for 15 minutes. And then she went on back to the rest of her day. I understand because that's how I got her back. But doing th little things like little, little, little things like that, little things. Uh, the girl that makes the money, she, her life is so uh, regimented, so self-indulgent, so self-centered, so self-serving that there's no room for a true relationship. Now, if I wanted to go over and hit it, I can do that. There's room for that because that can be scheduled, but you can't schedule a relationship. You cannot schedule people because one of the things, now, once again, I'm about to start talking about my former life. One of the things that is very difficult is maintaining a rotation of women. And this is why most men don't have one because you cannot just have a woman come over and have sex with you. That ain't gonna work. You can do that once or twice, but after that, she's gonna move on to something else. So one of the art of maintaining a rotation is you gotta make these chicks feel special. You gotta communicate with them. You gotta talk to them. I like to call it whole management. And whole management is a process. And you know what really got me uh, uh, in tune to whole management was my Craigslist advertising system. 
whether I felt like it or not, every day I woke up and I hit my ads. Every day I woke up and hit my ads. Strange insertion here. I'm literally, I noticed that when I do that with these cars, like uh, I, I start selling cars if I just delete the ads and I repost them. So I'm getting in the habit of doing that because this month I've sold three cars. So whether I felt like it or not, every morning I woke up, I don't care if I was sick, I don't care if I had snot coming out of my nose, I don't care, boogers. Head down, just went to every day, whether I felt like it or not. And this is one of the things that you have to do in the relationship. Whether you feel like it or not, you have to show up. And this is one of the reasons that I was able to maintain, uh, I'm gonna call it my most successful rotation of five women. I kept that for five years. There are people who get married and divorced in two years. You know what my rotation is? Good morning text and a good night text. Constant communication. You cannot just like, oh, just come over here when I want you to suck my dick. No, 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 no. You have to talk to her. You have to make her feel special. Even though this ain't your girlfriend, if you want access to that. And I got real good at that because I am a worker. I will do things whether I feel like it or not. Let me say this again, and I'm gonna say it three times. I will do things whether I feel like it or not. I will do things whether I feel like it or not. That's what you got to do in the relationship, whether you feel like it or not. And this is one of the biggest problems that the modern woman has. She will not take care of this dude if she don't feel like it. It's like, eh, I don't feel like having sex today. Eh, I don't feel like cooking dinner today. Eh, I don't feel like having a conversation with today. Eh, I don't feel like listening to you. Eh, I don't feel about, I don't feel like hearing about your bad day. I don't, Further and further and further and further and further and further away from a relationship. So, because um, one of the things that I'm seeing in the broken village and all of these people who are opting out of the American dream is that self-indulgence, that singular purpose, that self-serving notion. And most of these people don't have children. They're not married. They don't have children. And they've gotten further and further away from the center of family. Family's like here. This is the center. And they're like out here. And the village is going to continue to be more broken because these people, because like this chick I know that makes money and who is miserable. Like I said, she broke down crying to me in the middle of the night because she was miserable and she's seeing a therapist twice a week. There are many women who need therapy because they have moved so far from their purpose and to echo voices from the manosphere, the best years of their life when they should have been getting married and having children, they were party, party, party. And then, you know when a woman is 35 and is pregnant that is considered a high-risk pregnancy? And that many women who are like 45, even if they're not on birth control, you can skeet up in them reckless abandon. Now, if she's had children already, don't do that. If she's had children already, she can damn near have another kid up to damn 50 because her system is already wired for that. But if she's never had any kids and she's 45, it's going to be really difficult for her to get pregnant. Really difficult. And some women will enter that phase at 35 where it's just very challenging to get pregnant. So nature is cruel to women because when women are hot and fresh or when their marketplace value is at an all time high, that's when they should get married. 
That's when they should get married, not after their marketplace value has weighed. There's a video, Manospear Highlights Daily, I think that's the channel. And there's this 56 year old former supermodel who now says she's invisible. She looks really good, not just for her age, she looks good. She's um, thin, you know, she, she's got a great body and dudes are not checking for her because she's 56. And what if I say, I am 55 years old. In five years, I'm gonna be 60. There is no escaping the fact that I will be 60. 60 is old. That's the reality of the situation. I'm a realist. I know that's why I'm sitting right here. I'm trying to pull now while I still can. Because I understand if I want a relationship, I got to do things whether I feel like it or not to get the benefits of a relationship for the long term. And this is why so many men and women are alone because they don't want to put forth any effort to have a relationship. And this is on a personal relationship level where you're getting sex, you're getting companionship. Now, let's go back to how many of you, if your brother or sister got ill, would move your brother or sister in your house? How many of you would do that? Most of you wouldn't. It's like, hey, I'm sorry that happened to you, bro, sis, but you ain't moving in with me. So that's like a family member that you're not going to take care of. And then to create a relationship with someone where you're actually getting some out of it. And you, you can't even do that. The village is broken. And what I'm going to see, because you know we like to make fun of the uh, cat women, there will be cat and dog men. Because there's a lot of men that have abdicated the role of a provider, of a protector, of being responsible. They ain't gonna do it. They're not gonna do it. And one of the big issues that you will see as society continues to de-evolve, because during the global reset, I feel we're gonna see a return to traditional values, not because people want to, people will have to do it. That's what I see. I see a return to the nuclear family. I see a return because it's gonna get bad. It's going to get really, really bad. Really, really bad. Really, really bad. And one of the things that you're going to have to understand and research when the economy of Bosnia collapsed and the economy of Argentina collapsed, who were the first people to go? The single wealthy people because they didn't have no community. They had no family. They had no network. None. They didn't have none of that. And once again, as long as you stay on this self-indulgent tip, it's all about you and what you want. You move further and further away from the nuclear family. Literally, every time I talk about getting married and having kids, I literally get 20, 30 comments. Don't do it, man. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. You got people who have never been married, who are afraid to be married, who are afraid to have a family, who are afraid to stand up and be responsible. They don't want to do it. They just don't want to do it. So this is just my observations of the people who are running from the American dream because it's going to require them, it's going to require a higher level of cooperation that they don't want to give. And like I said, I understand for me to get the things that I want, I need to engage in an environment of cooperation. But like I said, uh, I'll be talking about this on Disruptive Mail, you know, maintaining the rotation, because I am seeing 
that the ability to maintain a rotation is some strong social interpersonal skills that the average person doesn't have. They don't have it. They don't have it. They don't have it. So once again, this Sunday, 4 p.m., we're gonna be having the first live training of home economics, and we're gonna pretty much run that this month, and then next month, we're gonna get into stage two. So once again, be on the lookout for that. And let me know your thoughts and opinions of this video because I, have, I keep seeing all of these opting out of the American Dream videos by lonely, single, childless people who I feel if you could get insights on their personal life, these people are miserable. They're terribly miserable. They're very unhappy, very unhappy. All right, that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.